Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on foreign inquiries and quotations. In our previous lesson, we discussed about foreign inquiries and quotations. Particularly, we have discussed about the different terms used in international trade. Let me remind you some of the main points. Delivery duty paid or DDP Delivery duty unpaid or DDU Delivery XQ or DEQ Delivery X ship or DES Delivery at frontier or DAF and carriage and insurance paid. Students, let's discuss the definition and details of each of the following trade terms. Coast, insurance and freight or CIF, coast and freight or CFR, free on board or FOB, free alongside ship or FAS, free carrier or FCA, and X-Works or EXW, Coast, Insurance and Freight or CIF. This trade term refers to the responsibility of supplier to arrange export customs clearance, delivery of goods to named port of destination, and insurance of goods. Seller arranges and pays for transport to named port. Seller delivers goods cleared for export, loaded on board the vessel. However, risk transfers from seller to buyer once the goods have been loaded on board, that is, before the main carriage takes place. Use of CIF rule is restricted to goods transported by sea or inland waterway. In practice, it should be used for situations where the seller has direct access to the vessel for loading. For example, bulk cargoes or non-containerized goods. Coast and freight. This trade term refers to the supplier being responsible for export customs clearance, delivering the goods to the named port of destination. For example, assuming that goods are exported to the port of Djibouti, SEFR transaction would read CFR Djibouti. Seller arranges and pays for transport to named port. Seller delivers goods cleared for export, loaded on board the vessel. However, risk transfers from seller to buyer once the goods have been loaded on board, that is, before the main carriage takes place. Buyer's obligations under the CIF and CFR terms. Customs clearance in buyer's country. Payment of customs duties and taxes in buyer's country. Inland freight in buyer's country. Other costs and risks in buyer's country. And marine insurance or CIF only. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the student sitting next to you. You have two minutes. If the trading term agreed between the sellers or exporter and buyer or importer is CFR, who has the responsibility to arrange for the insurance of goods? Does it differ from CIF?
Students, have you answered whose responsibility it is to arrange for the insurance of goods if the agreed term is CFR? Good. Let's provide you the answer. The buyer assumes risk of loss once the goods cross the ship's rail and must purchase insurance, unload the goods, clear customs, and pay for transport to deliver the goods to their final destination. The main difference between CIF and CFR is in CIF or Coast Insurance and Freight, the seller pays the insurance, whereas in CFR or Coast and Freight, it is the buyer. Free on board, FOB, is one of the most common terms used in international trade. Under FOB, the supplier is responsible for delivering goods to the named port, export customs clearance, and loading them onto the vessel. The point of transfer of responsibilities under FOB is described as the point when the goods pass the ship's rail. That means that if during the loading onto the ship, the goods would fall on the wharf or into the water, the seller would be responsible for the losses but if the goods fall on the deck of the ship, the losses are the buyers. In FOB terms, the seller fulfills its obligation to deliver when the goods have passed over the ship's rail at the named port of shipment. The buyer has to bear all costs and risks of loss of or damage to the goods from that point. Free on board requires the seller to clear the goods for exports. Free on board can only be used for sea or inland waterway transports. The following are buyer's obligations under FOB terms. Main carriage or freight, cargo or marine insurance, unloading from the main carrier and port charts, Customs clearance in buyer's country, payment of customs duties and taxes in buyer's country, inland freight in buyer's country, and other costs and risks in buyer's country. Free alongside ship or FAS is used only for maritime trade or transport by vessel. Under this arrangement, the supplier agrees to deliver the goods in proper condition alongside the vessel. This term of sale signifies that the price invoiced or quoted by a seller includes all charts only up to the ship at the port of departure. The buyer is responsible for loading and all subsequent charts. Free alongside ship can only be used for sea or inland waterway transport. Free carrier or FCA. This trade term refers to the seller hands over the goods cleared for export into the custody of first carrier or named by the buyer at the named place. This term is suitable for all modes of transport, including carriage by air, rail, road, and containerized or multimodal transport. The seller or exporter clears the goods for export and delivers them to the carrier and place specified by the buyer. If the place chosen is the seller's place of business, the seller must load the goods onto the transport vehicle. Otherwise, the buyer is responsible for loading the goods. The buyer assumes risk of loss 
from that point forward and must pay for all costs associated with transporting the goods to the final destination. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the students sitting next to you. You have two minutes. If the agreed trading term is FCA, who pays the following costs? A. Terminal handling charge at port of export. B. Export clearance. C. Transport cost up to the FCA delivery point or named place or up to the main carrier's receipt of the goods. D. Airport charge and transport security fee. Students, have you answered who bears the cost if the trading agreement is FCA for different types of fees and charts? Good. Let's now provide you with the answers so that you can compare your responses. If the agreed trading term is FCA, the following are applicable. Terminal handling charts at port of export is paid by the buyer. Export clearance is paid by the seller. Transport cost up to the FCA delivery point or named place or up to the main carrier's receipt of the goods is paid by seller. Airport charge and transport security fee is paid by buyer. XWorks or EXW refers to the seller or exporter makes the goods available to the buyer or importer at the seller's premises. The buyer is responsible for all transportation costs, duties, and insurance and accepts risk of loss of goods immediately after the goods are purchased and placed outside the factory door. The X works price does not include loading goods onto a truck or vessel and no allowance is made for clearing customs. If FOB is the customs valuation basis of the goods in the country of destination, the transportation and insurance costs from the seller's premises to the port of export must be added 
to the x works price. Under EXW, sellers minimize their risk by making the goods available at their factory or place of business. Buyers' obligations under the X work term include the following Inland freight, export customs clearance, origin port charts, payment of customs charts and taxes, main carriage or freight, cargo or marine insurance. Unloading from the main carrier and port charts. Customs clearance in buyer's country. Payment of customs duties and taxes in buyer's country. Inland freight in buyer's country. And other costs and risks in buyer's country. Now, I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the students sitting next to you. You have two minutes. You are selling 10,000 kg of coffee at the Ethiopian Commodity Exchange Market in Addis Ababa with an agreement of EX Works Addis Ababa Warehouse. Do you pay for loading onto the truck? Students, have you tried the question? Good. Let me provide you the answer. The seller of the coffee does not require paying any cost for transport as far as goods are available in the agreed warehouse. The seller makes the goods available at its premises. This term places the maximum obligation on the buyer and minimum obligations on the seller. The X works term is often used when making an initial quotation for the sale of goods without any costs included. Let me wind up today's discussion by summarizing the main points. Today, we have learned some trade terms which can be used by sellers or buyers. CFR or coast and freight at the named port of destination. CIF or coast, insurance and freight at the named port of destination. FOB or free on board at the named port of shipment. FAS or free alongside ship at the named port of shipment, FCA or free carrier at the named place of delivery, EXW or EX works. Students, in our next lesson, we will discuss about foreign terms of payments, letter of credit. This brings us to the end of our lesson today. See you next time in another program. Until then, goodbye teacher, goodbye students.